Dredge on IMSA Radio. Well, you know what they say, the championship sometimes is decided early. However, in Mazda MX-5 Cup, and particularly this year for the Edomitter Mazda MX-5 Cup presented by BF Goodrich Tyres, but we still don't know who our champion is going to be. Who will be taking home the $250,000 first place prize? We don't know who's going to be the Rookie of the Year either. And we have got the perfect venue to decide the big questions. 12 corners, just over two and a half miles, including that incredibly committed turn one. Just a brush on the brake pedal for these cars as you turn right and head uphill. Over the top of the brow, it turns two and three. Much more tricky than it looks uh, in point of fact. Down through the S's and through turn five. Then the fast bank right-hander at turn six, right into turn seven. You've got to get through there quickly because however quick you come out of turn seven will determine your speed at turns 10 A and B at the bottom of the hill at the back straight. And that is where we're going to see a lot of overtaking. Then it's under the bridge and down the hill to the diving right-hander at turn 12. Hello, everybody. Uh, in the broadcast booth, it's John Hindoff. And once again, my broadcast colleague, who is uh, used to patrolling the pits and paddocks around the world, including with us at Le Mans, is Shea Adam. What a season, Shea. And it all comes down to this. It does, John. And two of the championships will be decided once the green flag is waved. But that big one for the quarter million dollars of real cash money, that one won't be decided until the checkered flag is waved. And there are permutations where we wind up with a dead tie between the top two. It would go back to seconds, thirds, and then fourth place finishes. We, I, I, Connor Zilic, I think we'll take it on wins if it comes down to that. Not if Jared Thomas wins the race, but Connor ah. Zilic gets the bonus points and finishes second and oh, so on and so forth. Oh, that's right, because that would change things around. Bonus points here, must explain that very quickly because that's going to be uh, important. Ten points are awarded for the pole position, so Connor Zilic adds to his total and gets down to a 30-point gap to the championship lead. But you also get ten points for leading the most laps and ten points for the fastest lap in the race. Yesterday, the fastest lap went to a non-championship contender. The pole position non-championship contender so these are up for anybody to try and steal we'll be counting on our fingers and toes uh, for those points as we go through the cars are fired let's go back to yesterday it was sam paley on pole position in the blue number 28 but connor zillick put on a power move early on in the red white and black car from the outside pole as he came over the top of the brow it is doable we don't see it very often but connor zillick pulled it off in that number seven two car Sam Peely faded back through the pack and then a problem for the second place driver in the championship in the number five Gresham Wagner couldn't get the car turned what happened I don't know and there was a bit of steering issue with the car the steering rack wasn't doing what it should do Sam Peely passing Zilic for the lead down in turn 10a and 10b further back down through the turn a wild a wild ride for is fast snacked a lap later, he was off the circuit, just pitched the corner too much, left, right, will switch around and into the gravel, the sword in the stones, as somebody mentioned uh, yesterday. Side by side action was the order of the day as we came towards the end of the race. Zilic was leading, going into the white flag. Could he convert it with Celine? Roland right there, yes he could, and Conor Zilic pulled it all back, and this is going to be a fight to the finish. That brought the championship lead down to? 30 points yeah. uh, for starting today's race on pole position. It was 40, but because of those 10 bonus points that I just mentioned, brings Zilic's year total of bonus points up to 100, more than anybody else, nearly double next in line. 45 minutes on the clock, it is Conor Zilic, the rookie, uh, on pole position, Celine Roland in the 87 will be alongside Dennett Sam Paley and Julia Atanasio, Gresham Wagner trying to get a bit of redemption from yesterday in fifth position. He's got Jared Thomas, the championship leader, alongside him in the number 96 JTR Motorsport Engineering. Jared has benefited from the scholarships down through the years. He's built his own team up of JTR. He's extending his commitment to Mazda uh, next year, but also branching out, and we wish him well in this. He's going to be doing some selected championship events in the 
Pilot Challenge is part of IMSA with uh, a GT4 car, all made possible, as he told me earlier in the week, by the real cash money that Shea keeps talking about that he's had through this Mazda racing programme. He could be champion and take home $250,000 this weekend. Here we go, the green flag is in the air for the final time in the EWT Mazda MX-5 Championship is underway at Michelin Raceway Road, Atlanta. Pullman to the right-hand side, the inside of turn one. Connor Zilic gets it done, here comes Paley in the blue car. The number 28, that was a good start from him. Looks like Jared Thomas, you can spot Thomas's car with the bright yellow roll cage on that bright red car as they go over the top of the brown. Also coming through there, that uh, looked like Celine Roland was just dropping in behind, but that was a nice start share from everybody as they stream stream through the signature S's here at Road Atlanta. And John, I now have two pieces of paper that I can throw away because Rookie of the Year goes to Connor Zilich by dint of taking the start of the race. And Team of the Year, that's Connor's team. Hicks and Motorsport has wrapped it up by taking the green flag with at least one of their cars. Through into turn six and Paley's going for second position. Looks like Celine Roland has to give that one up. He does. Sam Paley comes through, but slides wide at the exit of turn seven on the yellow and blue curve. Just lost a little bit of grip, but there's a touch between those two. Ooh. That's extremely high speed there. Now watch the cars behind. Tyler Gonzalez coming through in the black car with the green stripes. And that is a second train of cars to the inside, to the left-hand side of the track. And Jared Thomas is on the end of that as well. That three-car train is dragging through. The draft is strong with these machines. Gonzalez coming round the outside, has made it up the second. Gresham wagged in the third. Oh, and the championship leader sideways. Jared Thomas sideways, a magnificent save. Here comes Dirks down the inside. Matthew Dirks in the Air Force car. That was a huge moment for Jared Thomas. Fast hands, Thomas, as we will have to call him now. How did he catch that slide? I have no idea how he not only didn't get caught the slide, but he didn't get swallowed up by the pack coming through as well. He lost all of his momentum coming out of 10B, and somehow he maintained position. But the big mover and all that, Joey Atanasio up to second place on this opening lap. He can't win Rookie of the Year. That's gone the way of Zilich, but he knows he can win this race. Roland and Sam Perley very close together coming out of uh, turn number seven. That's what set off the moment down at the bottom of the hill. Oh, the, also, who was that going off? Uh, That's Schmikowski. Yeah. It was Bruno. Yeah, absolutely. The 85 car. But how about this for Jared Thomas? He's in the mix. He gets a little touch on the side from his left hand side of Jared Thomas. Remember, these cars run with a decent amount of camber on the front and rear wheels. That means the bottom of the wheel and tyre is further out from the car than the top of the tyre. That's to get those BF Goodrich tyres on the ground when you're cornering. You're trying to maximise the contact patch. And that means you can quite easily get caught up. I noticed a couple of cars, including Connor Zilic, on the right-hand side of his car, had a nice donut mark just by the <laughs> number there as I was walking through the paddock this morning. He leads in that red, white and black car with still 42 minutes of the 2022 Edimitsa Mazda MX-5 Championship to go. Danger. Here comes, sorry, Shea, here comes Tyler Gonzalez down to take the lead. There's Joey action, Atanasio. Uh, excuse me, uh, Joey Atanasio uh, 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 down to take the lead in the 43. Uh, Gonzalez is in the 51, my apologies, but Sam Paley takes the uh, advantage as well to come up and draft through in the second. There's a heck of a battle going on from fifth on down, led by the championship leader. And that's what I was going to talk about there, John, because it's dangerous times for Celine Roland being right there with Jared Thomas. He knows that his co teammate, I should say, I was going to say co driver, but teammate is. Uh, Connor Zilich fighting for this championship at $250,000. He can't be seen as helping his teammate in this battle with Jared Thomas. Aaron Johnson in the 24 right in it there. That's a, that isn't the same replay that we saw earlier on because that's a spin down at 10 For Anthony McIntosh goes around in car number 69. Very fortunate that nobody picked him up there at the Nazi. Oh, huge. Oh, Celine. Celine Roland off at five. So even more action, he's gone all the way onto the national course, the school course here with that Austin Hatcher Foundation supported car. That's a really fantastic charity, go and look it up, uh, giving help to families and children who are having it very, very tough indeed with illness 
A bit of social responsibility there for Celine and his team. Pearly now then, in the blue, number 28 from Paul Sitnep, Zilic. Then Atanasio is sitting in the, second, in the fourth place in, in the second little group. So that's Gresham Wagner there. Tyler Gonzalez is in sixth position in the 51. Fastest lap of the race, Aaron Johnson in the number 24, not in the championship hunt. That's red, white, mostly white, but with the red and blue on the side. So used to Aaron being in the sole uh, crystal red car. Changed his uh, livery for this year. So at the moment, those 10 points are not going to either of the championship contenders yet. And neither are the 10 points for leading the most laps because it hasn't been Zilich out front for all of them. We've no. had two laps completed, Paley with one and Zilich with one. So Connor needs to get back out front. I, I said yesterday not to get too excited about the first few laps because we'd wrap up the excitement at the end. Well, the guys clearly weren't listening to me because they have set off at a cracking pace. Down to almost lap record speeds. 36.9 is the fastest lap for Aaron Johnson. And this time around, Matthew Dirks has a quick first sector. He's in the draft there. Mm. Open top cars, big roll cages, broken up airflow behind the cars, and that's allowed. Connor Zilic and Gresham Wagner to drag through. He's Jared Thomas in the danger area again as he goes past Sam Pearley. So Pearley, who was leading coming onto the back straight, comes into 10B now, climbing the hill, and he's down to fourth position, and he did not do anything wrong there. He's got Tyler Gonzalez for company, who's now ahead of Joey Atanasio, the two black cars. Tyler Gonzalez, the black with the orange writing, and the black, or at least dark grey, with the green stripes is Atanasio. Crash Wagner going for the lead into turn one and he makes it stick because our championship two are side by side and they both somehow survive. The early incident between Anthony McIntosh and the number 13 of Jensen Altsman has been reviewed. No further action from race control. That has pushed them both back down the field. Jensen down to 20th position. He'll relish that challenge. Let's see how far he can get up the field. The other driver I'm looking at uh, who normally charges through the field is to see where it Fastnacht is in the number 15. Had that rallycross accident yesterday. Oh, oh my Glenn goodness. McGee. McGee, Glenn McGee in the 30, uh, 23 car. Can he get it beast. moving? Now, not try and get it in the second. And don't use a lot of revs. You're going to have to slip your clutch, I'm afraid. That is in turn two, top of the hill. Now, did he jump or was he pushed? Uh, turn five, turn I think. Five, and the answer was he was pushed. Yep. Turn five. <laughs> turn two is race control. Uh, just said. Oh, How was that coming through? Uh, that was Max Apowski. Yes, and he it went was. for a bit of a rough ride as well. I think there was a touch there. Yep. Oh, no, Glenn is stuck. It will be full course yellow as now the waves are out on the starter stand. And Gresham Wagner has just taken the lead. Just as the yellow flags came out, we've seen races decided by manoeuvres that were done just before yellow flags. It's Wagner, Zilic, Jared Thomas. The top three as they go across the line. The race is neutralised with just under 37 minutes to go. Whew. It's not very often I quite like to see the safety car come out, but I, I'm not <laughs> sure that uh, I would have lasted the next 36 minutes at that pace. Well, you know what? I like seeing the safety car because I love the safety car. It's it is so beautiful. And it's in the colors of the Edimitsu Mazda that won Petit Le Mans one year ago. The 55 car going out on a high as Mazda ended a phenomenal program of prototype racing here in IMSA. Fairy tale ending. We had the summer of Mazda a couple of seasons ago with a raft of victories going out in the 10 hour race at uh, the Tielemon. So a little bit of a push from the marshals and a little bit of a tour on the strop, but that rear suspension does not look. Now, look, I, I haven't got all the gauges here, but by eye, I would say that rear suspension, uh, do you know what? I might be wrong. We had uh, JTR 
reset rear suspension at VIR by R by I in the pit lane, and Jared came from the back of the field to fourth position. Ah, that's the Mazdas are built strong, so that looks like that car is all right. That was just a little bit of dust and gravel, and maybe a little bit of deranged bodywork has lost the lead lap, though. Yes, but importantly, he's staying off of the racing line as much as he can. Glenn McGee is a very heads up very driver, good. and he's trying to knock all that gravel out without. Well, interrupting other people behind him. Just watch Apolski in the green, green car. Oh, you see, now I've, mm. I'm not sure. Maybe that was a, a bit of a swapper coming up the turn five. Are we going to get back to green flag racing this lap around? I don't see the safety car out in front of them anymore. And there it is, peeling into the pit lane. Excellent job by our safety officials. Once again, brilliant job by our safety teams. And thanks to all of them for giving us their time just under 34 on 34 and a half minutes, let's call it. As Wagner comes to the line, getting a little bit of a bump draft from Zilic in second. Then our championship leader, Jared Thomas, purely pulls out of line behind Thomas. One, two, three, Mazda MX-5s across the track. They'll have to filter into turn one. The championship leader goes up into second place, and here comes Purley. This could be big for the championship. Zilic toughing it out on the left-hand side at the top of the hill at turns two and three. He's got the inside for turn three, and will just hold on to third position. Atanasio back ahead of Tyler Gonzalez in that early battle down at turns one, two, and three. What a restart, though. Every driver trying to find a tiny little bit of advantage as Jared Thomas. Now, here's the question, Shea. Does he sit in behind Wagner and try and bring the tour to Zilic, who's leading that pack behind, or does he go for the lead straight away? Slippy surface flags at uh, turn number seven. In a normal situation, no, he wouldn't. He would want to get around Gresham Wagner. They've had a little bit of bad blood between them so far this weekend. There was contact in practice and in qualifying. But in this situation, Jared Thomas is $250,000 richer because he's ahead of Connor Zilich. You know, I talked about all those confusing championship permutations. It's as simple as if the 96 is in front of the 72, 96 is our winner. Well, the 72, Zilich is trying to take that check back. It comes down the inside at turn 10 at 10 here. He's up in the second. They have to give it away at turn B. The two championship contenders side by side behind Gresham Wagner as they go to the Fox Factory Bridge. And Sam Paley comes to play as well. Sam very disappointed he couldn't convert his pole position yesterday into a win across the line. Down to turn one. Paley still sitting out there alongside Zilic. Who's that in behind him? That's Atanasio in the black car with the green stripes. And Zilic hung himself out to dry there on the left-hand side of the track. He's lost a couple of positions. Now, two cars in between. He's going to have to be forceful here as he was at the start of the race yesterday. Right in there as well is uh, Cameron Lawrence in the number 88. Oh, now, my he, goodness. He's not a full series driver, so he will... No, Cameron's a smart cookie. He will not want to get involved with that number 72 ahead of him, but he's got behind him. Now, Atanasio pulls out the line. Then uh, Tyler Gonzalez in the 51 with the orange writing. Uh, Matt Dirks is in there, just Piscatel's in there. We've got some feisty competitors here. The pin's being pulled really early there. I'm not at all surprised, but I have to take my cap off to Cameron Lawrence. Championship debut, and he's in the top five, catching the guys fighting for the championship lead. It's always difficult at this time of the season when you come into a championship and you aren't a full-timer. You don't, you want to have fun, you want to do the best you can, but you don't want to affect the championship. Down towards turn 10. Leaders, top four are back together again. I'll make that the top 15, yeah. because all the way down. John, top 22, let's well, be honest. Yeah, well, Laura Hayes is in 15th, the Thunder Bunny racing car, one of the rookies in the 22. But you're right, Jensen Altman in the McCombie McAleer racing number 13, the Creon grey car with the black bonnet. They're Almost line astern all the way down. Another dive down the inside at turn one. This time it's Tyler Gonzalez who looks up the inside of Cameron Lawrence. He can see the top five getting away. Those two side by side are slowing each other down. Not the quickest line to be driving side by side. You're making a big hole in the air, but Matthew Dirks behind them is loving that because he's catching them up. There's the white number 24 with the red on the uh, on the bonnet as well on the hood. That's uh, 
Aaron Johnson. He's in the thick of the action a wee bit further back in the mid teens. Aaron, who just won the NASA championship for sprint racing back in WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca is off, has gone fast knocked. It's in not been a good knocked. weekend. Oh, he's such, such a talented driver. He's gone off at the exit of turn five. Now, can he get that car going? The 15 car tails into the wall. He gives a thumbs up to the marshals. That's, he's all right. Yeah. But can he get can he get the car going? There was a huge train of cars. We're looking for the black. Nope, full machine. course yellow. Full course yellow. I think it has to. It's too, ah, it's too much curb. Oh. Too much curb going in. And then he caught the change in surface where the national course uh, rejoins, actually, when you're using the the top end of the circuit only and that's pitched the car up in the air i suspect he's got some right rear suspension damage he's certainly got some bodywork damage there's a big hole there john and it gets dug out more and more but it's actually in the pavement mm. that's what sent him up into the air after he catapulted from hitting that that's going to need the flatbed i think yeah. not sure that's going to flat door now the good news is that it's straight back into that cutout where he came through yeah. So it's the end of the blue curb. As you come through, you drop into the gravel. It, sometimes, because you're taking so much momentum, get away with hitting the gravel. But then the yellow and blue curb here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, which is partially for the main course and partially for the short course. And there's just that little gap. And that's where the right rear BF Goodridge and... Race, racing wheel caught and pitched the car up into the air. That divot that's further down, my driving coach has actually said before, if you're going to hit it, go all the way out and miss it or straddle it. Straddle it. If you're going to hit it, you're going to damage your car. Yeah. Just lost it coming in. It's easy to do. It's such a fast corner. He got the four-wheel drift going. Um, he might have saved that there Oof. and then caught the edge of the gravel trap. And at that point, BF Goodrich tires, great. Give huge amount of grip, so long as they're actually in contact with the pavement. Or, I mean, Scrabbling for grip in thin air, honestly, they're pretty good, but even then, they're gonna give up a wee bit of grip. Pavement or grass, we oh, saw that yeah, yesterday. Yes, grass, very good. You know, they're off-roading history. Yes, so uh, right. we, we got a good demonstration of that in yesterday's race. The most important thing that's happening right now, John, time is ticking down. We're behind the safety car. Gresham Wagner is leading. He's already led four laps of this race. He's got double the amount of Connor Zilich or Sam Paley, meaning that the bonus laps, the longer we're under yellow, the more that he's racking up, they're gonna be harder to steal those 10 points back from him. And it's uh, Jean Jodoin who's got the uh, fastest lap with a 136.5, so again, that's not affecting the championship standings. If the checkered flag was to come out now in the championship, Jared Thomas would win the championship. There's two cars between himself and Connor Zilic. Sam Perley and Joey Atanasio are taking points away from Connor Zilic at the moment. Zilic, who started on pole position some, what, uh, 15 minutes ago, just a little bit more than that. But down in fifth behind the safety car with 27 minutes to go, absolutely sure we will get some more racing. And I'm pretty certain that 596, 1270, Zilic has just gone ahead of Atanasio there. That must have been a call from race control behind the, uh, behind the safety car to uh, reset the field. So it's 596, 2872, 43. 88, your top six. I will guarantee you that that is not the order by the time we get the checker flag. <laughs> I'm none of these cars, none of those cars will be in that order. Uh, they might all be in the top five, just, yeah, different variety, bit like a, a lottery that would happen. You might as well get the bingo balls out yes. and whiz them around in one of those uh, little uh, net things and draw them out. The thing I was just looking at, John, we do have a possibility for Sam Paley to move up one further position in this championship but not as things stand right now. Celine Roland is ahead of him in points. He's sitting 13th on the grid. That's not enough for Paley, even though he's within the top three. Paley would need to stay in the top three and Roland needs to fall down more. And there will be people saying, well, what's, what difference does it make if you're not winning? Money. What difference does it make? Money. How far are Mazda paying down the championship standards? All the way to Jensen Altman in 10th. You walk away with money from the banquet tonight. You get a nice check from Mazda, and you don't have to use that for anything that they want you to use nope. it for. It's your choice. Well, as we said, Jared Thomas used uh, 
uh, his the scholarship and prize money for the last few years to start JTR. Jared well, Thomas racing. And local hero, Michael Carter, who yes. sadly is not participating in this hey, race Michael, today. I know you'll be watching and listening. We miss you, bud. We wish you were in this one so badly. He was the champion two years ago. Got a quarter million dollars last year. He was second, walked away with the $85,000 prize. Used that money to put forth towards his racing this year. Carter Racing Enterprises was just him and his dad. It was very small, low-key team, but that is what this series breeds. It's a destination because people want to keep winning here. Very cost-effective racing. Proper race cars. And these cars did start out as street cars, but they did steer street cars up very long. Mazda here in the USA can sell every MX-5 from the showroom floor, so Mazda Motorsport have to work very hard to get an allocation. Over 200 of these cars exist. The latest iteration of the MX-5, the NDs as they are, and this is the second version of that car. The good news is that if you've got the earlier version of this ND Global Cup car, uh, you can upgrade it to the spec that these cars are racing. And in fact, we have chassis number 14 uh, in the race today, or at least uh, we did. I think that was Glenn McGee's car, wasn't it? He's still in it. He's still in it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course he is, yeah. So Glenn McGee is driving one of the original build cars, chassis number 14, uh, and it's been updated to have the new sequential gearbox from Sadev uh, in that car. All the cars have a... It's, it's not fair to call it a makeover by uh, the, the guys at Fliss at uh, Daytona and uh, wish them OK. Uh, everybody in Florida who's been suffering from the hurricane and tropical storm, our thoughts with you. As I say, not fair to call it a makeover. The car is stripped back basically to a, a shell. Everything is taken out of the car, including sound deadening and all the bits and pieces that make it such a refined little sports car. The engine is put to one side and sealed, and then over 250 pure racing parts are put back in, including that Sadev sequential gearbox, flat shift up, auto blip on the way down, racing diff, FIA cage, race wheels and BF Goodrich tyres. You get a seat, you get a steering wheel, you get a fryer suppression system. You can spec it with a second seat if you want to take people uh, on some very exciting track rides. And basically, it's on the button, ready to go. People come into this series, John, for a very good reason, because the cars lure you in, but then they become addicts of the series. Uh, hello to Mike Globe, a guy who's raced in this series for a couple of years now. He's at home watching, just dropped us a note, and nobody has done more races than the guy who currently is sitting in 14th position on the track as we get ready to go back to green. Alex Bashir has completed every single MX-5 race since the Gen 4 car came into existence. Wow. Green flag is in the air. We are halfway through the final race of the season for the EW2 Mazda MX-5 2022 Championship. And Gresham Wagner getting a little push from Jared Thomas coming in the braking area at turn one, such as it is. It's a very, very light braking area. And Wagner got the car settled down very nicely there. She goes over the top at turns two and three. Sam Peely's the blue car in third position. Then the Hicks in number 72. Second in the championship after the race result yesterday for Connor Zilic. Second and fourth are the two championship contenders. Once again, a stream of Mazdas to turn five over the yellow and blue curbs. Down towards turn six, a bit of red Georgia clay dust being kicked up by Tyler Gonzalez, I think it was, in the 51 through turn six. Really sensible restart this time. Just Piscatel in. Ninth position, Jodwan still with the fastest lap for Makumbi Magalia racing in the number 39 in 10th position. Onto the back straight, is that a little gap I see between first and second? It is, but for how long will that exist? Was that just Jared Thomas giving Gresham Wagner a sense false of security and letting him sneak away to then come and attack him like a shark? And that's exactly what's happening as Sam Paley is now helping our championship leader. 
Shout out for the blue car. I was just about to say, he pulls out. He got the double draft down the inside at 10A. Now the championship leaders are side by side for a moment in the two mostly red cars. And here comes Silic up the inside. This would be the championship if he could get through. He's got through down to the final corner. Ananasio side by side behind them as well in the 43 car with the green stripes on it. Zilic now then. Let's just scribble out what we've put on the piece of paper. The championship table changes again, and Connor Zilic has a slim advantage, but problems for Jared Thomas as he's dropped back into the clutches now of Cameron Lawrence and Ananasio and Gonzalez and Dirks and Piscatel side by side with Jean Jadan there as they were going through turn two. As they run right now, the advantage still goes the way of Jared Thomas by a scant 10 points. Right. But again, bonus points can change that. They're still fastest lap and they're still most laps led. And right now, Gresham Wagner has one hand on that most laps led award. So one more position for Conor Zilic would tie things up at the top of the table. And if there's a tie, and neither he or Jared Thomas wins, it will go on count back to Zilic for more wins. Correct. Yeah. Oh, flashing headlights. That makes you go five miles an hour quicker. Everybody knows that, except <laughs> it isn't for the number 43 of Joey Atanasi, another one of the rookie contenders. My goodness, what a crop of rookies we've had this year. Sam Paley flew the flag yeah, last year for the rookies. This year, Conor Zilic has been at the sharp end, and there's Paley going to wow. the lead. Down the inside of Wagner in second. Third is Conor Zilic. Oh, side by side again. Now, this is going to be dicey. There's just a little bit of sealer as they come into the final corner, and that's another lap led by Gresham Wagner. That's eight just. now. <laughs> just, yes, he squeaked it out. Eight laps led for Wagner, two for Zilic, and two for Paley. Wide entry to turn one by the number 96 with the yellow roll cage. That is Jared Thomas. He's got a lovely run up there. Paley was about three or four Mazda MX-5 lengths behind that leading trio. Now he is right there. That was really smart driving, cool head from the man who is still just holding on to the championship lead. He's also got the experience in this championship, John. He's been rookie the year before. He's spent a lot of time here perfecting his trade, and he's trying to show this young kid, hey, you might be making your championship debut, but this is my year to claim the championship. Uh, we've got a little bit of an audience watching us here in the booth, all from Mazda, and I think they are as nervous as the teams will be <laughs> down in the pit lane at the moment. This championship is going right to the end, exactly as advertised at the start of the season. They came back with such an impact in the best possible way a couple of seasons ago at Daytona with the blanket finish, five, six, eight, ten, whatever it was, wide. Then we had the Lightning McQueen finish right at through Sebring. the middle at Sebring. And <sighs> the Masters are back on the IMSA package with a bang. It's amazing, actually, how many people... I'm looking across to the press room here. They are glued to the screens here. This is a destination for the other championship runners here, including the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. They all come out to watch this, or watching it on the screens around the circuit. Wagney, Paley, Zilic, Thomas. Dirks, Gonzalez down the inside for Zilic. Goes to second. So pressure again now back on Jared Thomas. Yeah. Oh, my goodness me. So it's now tied up at the top. And Zilic would take it on count back with one more victory across this season. Yep. And Gresham Wagner's out there leading another lap. He's got nine to his name now with just under 17 minutes to go. I'm giving him the award. I don't think that anyone <laughs> else is going to be taking that away. And we're lapping around about eight tenths of a second away from the fastest lap that's been set so far, which I'm giving to Jean Chatouin. Yes, that's right. So there's still an opportunity for one of the championship contenders if they can get a bit of clear air. And that's a very big if to get that extra 10 points. Cameron Lawrence was just hung out to dry. He ran wide through five, got on the grass, and then was passed by a slew of cars. Now he's back into the ninth position, and that sets Joey Atanasio free to focus forward and try and catch up to the bumper of Tyler Gonzalez. The championship season comes down for the last 16 minutes here at Michelin Raceway Road, Atlanta. My goodness. 
it's all led up to this. There has not been a dull race. There's barely been a dull corner, never mind a dull lap this season. Go and have a look at the results. Look at how tight it's been across the top three, four or five. Winning margins that we've measured in thousands of a second. Every corner is a woo. It is absolutely every corner is a woo as Paley goes through. Now, into the lead, we've got Zilic. That's exactly where he wants to be. And right now, it's his championship with a bit to spare because he's got two cars between himself and Jared Thomas, and he's got an extra win if it was to end like this. But with 15 minutes to go, it can all change. The problem that he's got right now, though, John, is that Gresham Wagner in second has nothing to lose. He can win this race or he can finish last. He's going to get third in the championship. He wants to win, especially after does. yesterday. Connor Zilic doesn't have to win the race to win the championship. Gresham Wagner knows that. Sam Paley hasn't got a win. He hasn't got a win, ever. The blue car. So, you know, he started from Paul. He thought it was a great chance. He was disappointed with what happened yesterday. Matthew Dirks right in there as well. Behind, yep. behind Thomas. Of he's, he's again, there's a driver who all he's looking for is a, is a better finish in this race. He's got a couple pole positions to his name from this year. He's been super fast. He took fastest lap of the race yesterday. But again, podium, trophy, that's different. Leading pair starting to get away. Gresham Wagner for Spark Performance, pushing Hicks and Motorsports. Number 72, Connor Zilic. Connor in his first season of this championship. That's Connor's third lap led. So he would need seven more in the 14 remaining minutes. Here comes Wagner down the inside, down into turn one, turn one and turn 10 to the big overtaking maneuvers. Zilic pretty much nailed on for the Rookies Championship. He is, it's yeah. guaranteed. Okay, so he's got $80,000. If now, he doesn't yeah. win the championship. Well, and, and that's the point, because the regulations are very clear on this. For the rookie, you get your $80,000 uh, for winning the Rookie Championship, or you get whatever is paid for your championship position, whichever is the greater. So. He's got 80,000. He's looking at a $250,000 prize. That's a big upgrade. Yeah. That is a big upgrade. He's not going to settle just for being best rookie. He wants to win the overall. Second in the championship is $85,000. So he right. knows he's walking away with at least 85 right, grand okay. in yes, tonight's good point. banquet. Good point. But yeah. he would much rather be a quarter million dollars. Yes. So 85 is, I feel like a game show host. All right, Connor Zilic, you've got 85. Are you gonna go for the $250,000? Well, the answer to that is absolutely hanged off. And there's no doubt about that. Sam Perley plays the spoiler down the inside. And here comes Jared Thomas as well. With that yellow roll cage, he's up alongside Gresham Wagner. Wagner just drops two BF Goodrich tires off the circuit and here comes Matthew Dirks in that Air Force drab green car. And Thomas from challenging has gone back, back another position and he's got Gonzalez, Tyler Gonzalez in the 51 car with the orange writing. Now can they get a little bit of a run down the inside? Yes is the answer to that through turn one. The place just lost is regained by Jared Thomas in the space of two corners. Oh, and he gets hit by Dirks and he's off. There's the championship disappearing into the turn two wall for Jared Thomas and JTR Racing. He's got it moving again, John. Remember, we've seen him come oh from the back of the field goodness. before. He's dropped down outside the top 15. Now is the damage to the rear left suspension. Matthew Dirks toughing it out. Hit the curb. Oh. Well, that'll be looked at. But that's, it's, that's the kind of racing we've seen all year. We're still green, by the way. Well, that was the only, I think, only chance was to go yellow with 12 minutes to go. And Connor Zilic then looks like he may have been aided in his championship challenge by Matthew Dirks in the number 76 car. Race control is saying that both cars have continued. Haven't yet declared that they're going to be looking at that one as Connor Zilich is still leading. Sam Paley second and Gresham Wagner third. Now it's Tyler Gonzalez up to fourth. That was your classic example of what I was talking about early on. We nearly saw it early on coming out of seven. That was 
two wheels clashing yep. and because they're both angled out from under the bodywork the incident is under review of course it is it has huge implications but the fact that that was a championship affecting a championship affecting incident that is not what race control are looking at they're just looking at that incident in isolation just remember that Jared Thomas is now 18 17th excuse me with 10 and a half minutes to go remember that because he still has the championship lead if Connor Zilich finishes below 18th it's not over yet is what yeah, I'm saying Yeah, that's that's fair point but as it stands at the moment I mean the team Hickson will be on shoot oh we've got some debris, debris on the circuit to turn five and it's on the racing line quickie yellow here would make things interesting here oh. comes Atanasio we don't even have to go yellow, John. Look at how how tightly together the whole field is. The marshal could run out there after the last car passes and still have a minute or more to even get back. Silic leads. Hicks and Motorsports will have been on the radio to him. These cars are fitted with pits to car and car to pits communications. Just keep it going now. He does not need to win this race. Does nope. not need to finish second. No. Nope. Adonasio on the flasher again. And no FA. action. No action. I, I, I was going to say it at the time, but it's not my place to. It looked to me like a racing incident, the very definition thereof. So the top six are together, down to Justin Piscatel in sixth position. Celine Roland just a little bit further back. Alex Petura having a decent run as well, up to, what's that, eighth position for Alex, who's been in every single race involving this uh, ND version of the Cup car. Gresham Wagner to the lead. Zilich to second. There's Thomas. He's catching up to the pack, John. He just passed under our feet. He's going to get more positions back. It's not enough, though, Shears. It's, it's not going to be enough unless something happens to that Hickson number 72 car. Well, it's not what we wanted to see. We were hoping to see the two championship protagonists battling to the checkered flag and see possibly a moment of brilliance decide the championship. But in the kind of close racing that we've had all season in the Edemitsu Mazda MX-5 Championship. There was always the possibility that what we saw happen would happen. And the man on the wrong end of it, as far as his championship hopes is concerned, is Jared Thomas. In behind Laura Hayes in the Thunder Bunny Racing red and white car. He's already up in the back of the platform. That's 20, what's that, 22nd position? No, uh, 16th, 16th position, excuse me. 16th yep. position for the 22. Zilic hoping to win the championship in style. He's got oh, three wide behind him. Gonzalez almost onto the grass with his left hand. BM, BF Goodrich as he came down the hill to turn 10A. Eight minutes to go, shit. He's got Joey Atanasio behind him, does Connor Zilic. That would be slightly unnerving because <laughs> Atanasio is another rookie. They're, yes, true. They're not guys with loads of experience. And then Sam Paley, one further car back, both second and third, looking for wins only. Now, bear in mind, Jared Thomas it is a single car who is fighting his way back. JTR have other cars in the race, but they are not at the front of the grid right now. So there's not going to be any help there for Jared. Connor Zilic racing for Hickson Motorsports. He's on his own too right He's now. He's really on his own, yeah. Next Hickson car is... Uh, seventh. Uh, in seventh position oh. for Celine Rolland. So not even in that lead group. Sam Peely. Now, Sam must realise he's got a real opportunity here. In fact, everybody behind Connor Zilic must realise, look, this is a guy going for the championship. How hard is he going to defend for this victory? And the answer's got to be, well, let's find out, shall we? You know the beautiful scene with all the seagulls in Finding Nemo? Mine, 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 mine. That's what every driver <laughs> behind Connor Zilich is saying right now. Six and a half minutes oh to goodness. go of the 2022 IMSA Edemitsu Master MX-5. Here's Here Gresham Wagner. Then. Wagner with help from Peely. No, Peely no. goes to the two cars ahead and will draft through into third position Atanasio almost on the back of the leader champion elect as it stands at the moment there's nearly three cars wide behind him Justin Piscatel trying to take advantage in the lighter blue car the lilac colored car with the yellow wheels and yellow roll hoop 
another lap led for Connor Zilic. He might even still yet get the most lap led here with five, mm. six minutes to go. I think we've got time for four more laps that would tie him with Gresham Wagner for laps led, and I think it would still go the way of Wagner because he led, or no, it was Zilic who led the first lap. Yeah, correct. Oh, I'm not sure how that's decided. So, green flags yeah. around the circuit. Now, I know you want to know how is Jared Thomas getting on. He's up to 15th position. He's 10 seconds away from the front of the field as he's now in behind. Now, that's Jensen Altman in the crayon grey with the black hood. Jensen in looking to cement his 10th place in the championship and take over check in the back of this evening. Ahead of him it is 39. John and let's just check that fastest lap as that's still with John. Yes, it is. Still the left-hand indicator on after the wheel twirling from Jared Thomas. He's got a crinkled right rear he's making up positions and at the front of the field Connor Zilic reckons the best place to be is out front he's got a target on the back of his car but at least at the moment he's in charge of his own destiny I'm not sure how I feel if you're out front then everybody's trying to pass you but if you're in that pack of five or six cars then anything could happen, as we've seen. As we've seen, demonstrated as Joey Atanasio goes to the lead of the race, brings with him Gresham Wagner and Tyler Gonzalez. Now Sam Paley taking a look down oh. the inside of Connor Zillage, and all of a sudden he's first to fifth. I was just about to say that there is a big gap behind this leading group of cars. And I wonder if Hickson have said, you do oh, another huge moment for, for Jared. Jared Thomas. So having made up all the places and he's got ahead of Jensen Altsman, oh. He's in behind the number 36 there of David Starb, the bright blue car. Aaron so, John Summers just peeled into the pit lane, John. Okay, so that's a, another car into the pit, so that's end of race there. Three and a half minutes to go. I wonder if Hickson has said to Connor Zilic, um, you don't need to be in this group. Just drop to the back of the group. Get out of any potential issues, because he doesn't. No. As it stands right now, he just needs to finish this race without any incident. And there's a big gap, and I mean a big gap. This back of Alex Batura from eighth down to Max Opalski in ninth. There's nine seconds. What a great drive from Alex Batura to yes, be up in absolutely. this front battle. Yeah, he's, he's sat in eighth for quite a long time uh, and has closed in, actually, uh, on this uh, battle got on the back of Celine Roland and came back to the grid, just sitting on the back there in the uh, dark grey car with the orange and white stripe. Batura in the number 33. A constant oh. in MX-5 Cup racing with this iteration of the Global Cup car. Tyler Gonzalez to the lead once again, looking for his third win of the season at a third different venue. He's passed Gresham Wagner, and now Atanasio in third, Paley in fourth, and then Zillage fifth, but Piscatel in sixth. Jared Thomas back up to 11. There it is. He's charging, but there's not enough time. Oh, off goes Celine, Celine. Roland. Turn five, keep your foot in. He's just about kept Good going man. through the turn five. Gravel looks behind, checks to see if he can rejoin safely. And then there were seven at the front of the field. So Petura's going to go up the seventh position now at the front of the field. Tyler Gonzalez is now, I took my, took my eyes away from it for a moment and it's again changed. It's Tyler Gonzalez now looking for his first victory for Copeland Motorsports. White flag being readied. Down to my left on the finish line in the starter stand. Seven cars battling for the win. One car in there is the number 72, currently in fifth. Stays there, wins the championship. It's as simple oh. as that. Huge sideways slide by Gonzalez. He caught that one. That was at least three or four miles an hour quicker than he's gone at any stage through into turn one. He smells a victory here. Two and a half miles left. 
of the 2022 championship for the Edomitu Mazda MX-5s. And Tyler Gonzalez leads them in the turn one for the final time. Gresham Wagner looking for a victory. Sam Pili looking for his first victory as well. So and Silic has dropped out of this. He's dropped behind Piscatel. Very sensible. If there's a big kerfuffle here, he needs as much time as possible to avoid it. He's in sixth. Jared Thomas is in 11. Looking at the back of Cameron Lawrence for 10. Cameron Lawrence again making this championship one off. And then Max Zipowski right there as well. He can get back to ninth. That's a two position difference. I don't know what that does for the points, John. I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's enough. Is it still John Jodwan who gets the bonus points for the fastest lap? It is. Okay. Yeah, absolutely right. Let me do some Shares do some quick, uh, arithmetic. We've got an abacus here, which is lovely. Uh, all the latest tech here in the broadcast booth. Let's worry about the championship in a moment because we've got a potential for first-time winners here. Gresham Wagner, disappointed with what happened yesterday. He's going to drag to the lead. Oh, is he? Sam Pearley is picking Tyler Gonzalez and he's helping him down the hill. It's going to be Niven Tuck in the last of the lead breakers in the turn 10A and 10B. Here comes Pearley. His, has he got a shot at the victory? He might have just pushed the Copeland Motorsports 51 to the, the win here in the final race of the 2022 season. It's Gonzalez. Gonzalez out of the final corner. Gonzalez to the checkered flag ahead of Wagner in second. Sam Pearley off on the dirt, but will take the third step of the podium as Sam Pearley demolishes a couple of the advertising signs. Now, now we can think about the championship. And Thomas got through to ninth. Thomas got, got ninth. through to ninth ahead of Max Opalski on the line. So, Connor Zilic in sixth position. Now we think about the championship at the $250,000. So. And Thomas then in ninth position is on what points? 3,600. And in sixth position, just ahead of Alex Pashura, Connor Zilic in sixth is on. 3,600. No way, we've got the tie. I and, believe we do. And the tie, so after all of that, the tie break goes to the most victories, and that is Connor Zilic. As of yesterday, that is Connor Zilic. So that win yesterday, unbelievable. Pashura is getting a penalty at the end. Oh, hang on a minute. That's going to move that's him up gonna, one more. That's a drive through penalty. Forget what I've just said, because Thomas, now... Pachura was in seventh, which means that that's going to move Jared Thomas penalty? up what's one. The, what is the time penalty? For this pit lane, at least 35 seconds. What's the difference between them on the track? As they cross the checkered flag, it was, it was about 10 seconds. It was about 10 seconds, so... Jared Thomas would be our champion. Oh, my goodness. We, we honestly don't know. We honestly don't know at this point who's taking the championship. We have a tie on points as they cross the line, but Batura's penalty might hand this back to Jared Thomas. Oh my goodness. Well, we expected drama across the season within the race. The drama is not over. The drama's pulling into the pit lane right now, trying to figure out which of the cars to send to the podium. Well... Race Control is currently evaluating, John. They're trying to figure out which one of these two very deserving young men is going to walk away with this check. Silic. And... Well, they're all in a line because they are not the podium for the race, but the championship is hanging by a thread. They happen to be... Line astern in the pit lane. Batura's penalty, if it's more than 10 seconds. Wow. A season that comes down to this. <laughs> How no, I, remarkable. I think it's, actually, I think it's 20 seconds. I think it's 90 seconds because there's, there's nine seconds between Batura and Rolan and then uh, another 10 seconds. Yep. So it's, it's just on 20 seconds. What is the penalty for Alex Batura? That is going to decide the championship. You could not script this. You could not script this. Connor Zilic with the championship in his hands at one stage there, but you could say that of Thomas as well before he was tipped out by Matthew Dirks. He fought his way back, 
from late teens into ninth position. It could be a net eight. If it's eighth position for Thomas, he's won the championship. Yep. And you might think, why do you not know, John? Because we don't know how much the time penalty for the drive-through will be for Alex Petura. In which case, how much is Connor Zilich regretting letting those cars through on it, the last it, no, lap? No, no, it was the right thing to do. It Shea. was. It, it was, was the right thing to do. It is tied in points, which if it stays that, this is how they came across the line. Sixth for Zilich and ninth for Jared Thomas. If it stays like that, then Connor Zilich and Jared Thomas are tied on 36, did you say 3,600 points? 3,600 points. Right, and therefore, Zilich would be the championship by c courtesy of him having the one extra win which he scored yesterday. However, we have a penalty hanging over another driver, the number 33 of Alex Petura. And now I'm looking at the results. Timing. Is Petura out of results there? Uh, yes, he's dropped out at 19th. Jared Thomas is eighth. Jared Thomas is eighth. We can call this for Jared Thomas. It's JTR that have won it. Petura has been demoted down to 19th. He's heard that on the PA. His hands go up. That is the championship. My goodness me. <laughs> but I have got goosebumps here. The grid tied them up, and then the penalty, the Copeland and JTR guys are down there. They are celebrating, oh. and, well, what a brilliant, brilliant season. Uh, it, it will be, of course, that Connor Zilich for Hickson Motorsports wins the rookie championship and... And team's and, championship and team's for Hickson. championship and takes home second position. It could not have been any closer as they cross the line the scores were tied we're just going to check the arithmetic here and make sure that yep we, by 10 points 10 points the smallest margin that it could be oh my goodness alex petura's accident and the demotion of him from uh, seventh position down to 19th that lifts jared thomas up to eighth in the points the championship went the whole distance and then more into the pit lane of Park Fermin. What a season it's been for Edema 2, Mazda MX-5. Congratulations to Hickson, who take the team's championship, to Connor Zilic, second in the overall and taking the rookie championship, and Jared Thomas, by the barest of margins, 10 points is as little as it could be. Jared Thomas wins the championship in 2022. For Shea Adams, I'm John Hindoff. Bye-bye. This program is a Radio Show Limited production. For more, check imsaradio.com and subscribe to IMSA Radio wherever you get your podcasts. The Simcast. News, reviews, special guests and racing updates from the virtual motorsport community. Whether it's console or PC, controller or wheel, The Simcast has you covered.